if people keep talking to you on every beat of your life, I'm trying to push you like a truck before you can capture what is right to be done in a right season. You have not started growing. I studied the life of Jesus, and one of the captivating things I saw about Jesus is that and the child grew. It was a seed of the Holy Ghost. But the child grew. And the Bible say, and was strong in the spirit. That's number two. Was strong in the spirit. And the third one say. And the stature, that's his appearance. His appearance became like that of a lion. And the Bible said in Proverbs 28, verse 1, that the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. Was strong and those, you know, in stature that you cannot intimidate him. And the fourth one says, and he was filled with wisdom. Someone say wisdom. Wisdom is putting God's word to work. The word of God has been given to you. The wisdom is your capacity, your internal convictional capacity to put the word to work. If you are not able to put the word to work, you have not either known the word nor believed the word. And the word will never work until the word is put to work. It's the believer that have to put the word to work. And we are in church. To put the word to work. When the word go to work, the world will go to sleep. Because the word, the word is a product of the word. When you put the word to work, the world around you will be subjected. And what was the last? What's the last one? Luke two fifty two. He said, and he was in favor with God and in favor with men. Five level of growth of Jesus. You see, it is possible for money in your hand to finish, but it is not possible for the fountain of favor to be shot. Even when salary has not been paid, favor is a daily salary. Confess of our favors with a good will, with bread, with bread, to know where you are and to, where, to know where you are going. The Bible says, and Jesus was in favor with God and in favor with man. So there was no time of his life that he suffered rejection. Even when they came to the time of persecution, the Bible said God only turned his back. God can turn his back, but because we are children, and like the passion of a mother, even if you turn your back on a child because you want to sleep, at the time you will turn your back and turn you know, your face to the child. To find out how the child is doing. I see God turning his back around. I see the face of God appearing again to you. At crucifixion, God turned his back. But at resurrection, God showed back his face. And resurrected him. You have been too low for a while. You are going up. I didn't hear somebody say that. Lift up your hands. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How grand.
Behold the lamp of God that was lit. The only slim lamp that is already to live again. Behold the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. It was that same lamp that was lit. And the purpose of his being slain was to provide atonement. In some areas of denomination today, what this week is all about is confession of sins. What a practice of culture of religion. But the only pattern there is that they have no knowledge of what they are doing. For us in the Pentecostal, the application of this season is to remember how our sins were plotted away. And to remind ourselves that the sins have been taken away and we must not rebuild it. A two men simply means the practice of taking away guilt. The culture of taking away sin. And Jesus is the one that came to take away our sins. He's the Lamb of God. I'm going to show you a first scripture tonight. And briefly we're going to pray. And I believe that he will not only be your horn of salvation. He will become your redeemer. At the horn of salvation, he has come to fight and conquer. But at the Redeemer, he has paid the price and he purchased you. You now belongs to him. Lift your hands and wave it to him. Oh. 
holy, most holy is our Lord God. Is our Lord God. Is our Lord God. Holy, most holy is our Lord God. Is our Lord Ah, God, we worship you. The most high God that is seated upon the highest throne of his mercy. We honor you, the lamp of our redemption. The keeper of Israel. Bible say that he that keepeth Israel, neither sleep nor slumber. The shepherd of our soul. The watchman of the universe. Our God, our strength, our shield, our buckler, our deliverer, and the heart of our salvation. Glory, honor, power, and majesty be unto God. Sing it, sing it from the depth of your heart. Glory, honor, power. Possibility possible. 
Oh, mere possibility, possible. possible. Il possible. The impossible before you today, before the night season is over, shall become a testimonial. I am not hearing a living man. Where men and women are told you it is no go area, it is impossible. By the power of our two men, the Lord shall make a way for you. He shall break barriers on your ways. He shall break barriers in your house. He shall break barriers in your business. Please lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, you may be seated briefly. You may be thank you for adjusting your channel to be here. You will be also here tomorrow. Um, we finished convention as our culture demand. We're supposed to go on a little break. But thank God we didn't go on break. Praise God. And thank God that we have the Spirit of God to know what to do at a given time of life. Leviticus 23, we read it on Sunday. Leviticus 23. Again, let us repeat verse 27 of that scripture. And they said, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. There shall be a day of atonement. I'd like you to listen to the scriptures we are looking at. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord God. Tenth of this month will be Friday. Is that correct? And that Friday, I want to declare it today as a day of stay in the house of the Lord. If you don't have anywhere to go, come to the house of God and stay. The Lord will be here. Praise God. I know classes will be going on. Don't make noise. Just come here and stay with the Lord. Thank God the, the rock has been fixed so everything is fine. He said, you will afflict your soul and offer a sacrifice of fire unto the Lord. That sacrifice talks about a kind of fasting that you have to fast. It's part of it. Hourly prayers is part of it. Don't just come and stay because the pastor have said it. Come to stay because there is some things to settle with the Lord. Search your life. Search some things around your house. Come before the Lord. Do it this week because very soon many of you may not have free access to this altar. The altar is becoming too sacred that we needed to guide it. Praise God. And we will have a reason why you have to be here. Those days you see that they put gate at the altar corner. They are not just being funny. When the holy sacred place is open to all, it becomes a risk. Praise God. For your heart here, if there is any hand that is not working, come. 
If there is any soul that is not having peace, come. If there is any failing expectation, come. Stay in this altar. Now, that is one instruction I don't want to forget and tell everybody you can tell. Praise God. You know, on Monday, people wake up and they say that their shop were being broken. So many things are happening. But some also are relocating their shop. Zone 2 is becoming more busy now. Praise God. Some of us are going to have more neighbors. Praise God. So there's a shifting going on. There's a shifting. When God gave us a land or that road, we would have built it maybe not like this. But by now, would have been shifted. But thank God that it was it looked like a disappointment then. So that we will not shift now. Are we here? We paid no we, didn't, we were not able to recover some of the money. But thank God for the one we recovered. And thank God we, we did not die. There's no loss that is bigger than your soul. Every one of the enemy takes everything and live your life like Job. You will be ten times better than you ever were. So let us return back to God. Let us return back to the covenant. Let us return back to the holy altar of God. And begin to live a life that is worthy of God for us. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I want to leave there back to Psalm 18. I want to show you a few things in Psalm 18. Before I take you to the New Testament. And then we pray. Psalm 18, on Sunday, we'll look at verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. Are we still there? My buckler and the horn of my salvation. I was thinking that some of you will come with your trumpet. Because trumpet is the closest. You used to have a trumpet. It's there in your bag. You'll be ready to blow it for me. Seven times. Praise God. Are we here? There used to be this plastic trumpet. If we cannot buy that horn, uh, that shofar, please go look for it this week. It's the cheapest we can have. Shofar is very expensive. Yeah. But there's a store that has it now. Okay, praise God. Don't work it out. And my high tower. Now, the question is this. What state of life was David when he got the revelation of God as the horn of his salvation? I want to show you. On Wednesday last week, I was reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we, we came to verse 16 and said, Pray we are season, for this is the will of God. Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. Rejoice. Now look at it there. Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. Pray with us season, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus consigning me. Are we here? The question is that there's no time of life, of your life, that God is not God. There could be cloud, there could be mountain, there could be shaken, there could be trials. They cannot surprise God. God is God. All the time, all the moment, and all the season. The important thing God is looking at is what is your response to challenges of life? And how do you react and respond when things you don't expect comes your way? Look at what David was saying in verse 4. He said, The sorrow of death compassed me, and the flood of ungodly men made me afraid. The flood of what? The sorrow of death is the concern, a feeling. 
a sense and a feeling around you that all is not well. You just start feeling that, am I going to die? Is somebody around me going to drop dead? Ungodly men talks about seeing wickedness at the highest order. I thought that what was happening is only Nigeria. But when I listened to a video clip from Cameroon today, Cameroon was worst of, it's worst of Nigeria. And the same system. Now look at verse 5. The sorrow of hell compassed me about. The sneers of death prevented me. Verse 6, everybody. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He had my voice out of, the, out of his temple and my cry came before him, open unto his ear. Then the air shook and trembled. The foundation also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was angry. So if those of you that pray today and fasted today, I ask you to stay on Psalm 80. You are still going to stay on it tomorrow. You will see a lot of things. Don't just look at it as an entertainment. You know, in verse 3, say, I shall call upon the Lord. Then shall I be saved from my enemies. We will call upon the Lord. I don't know the enemy that is after our inheritances. I don't know the enemy that is after our apartment. A God's plan. But the psalmist say, the Lord is the horn of my salvation. I shall call upon the Lord. And then I shall be saved from my enemies. Then he look, this side problem, left problem, front problem, back problem. And they saw ungodliness everywhere. No one appeared to be friendly. Could you still pray in that kind of atmosphere around your life? David did. In verse 6, he said, in my distress situation, in my hopeless situation, against the expectations of my enemy that expected me to be crying, I call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible saw, and the Bible gave a testimony, and the Bible said, and they had my voice. And he came down. He shook the foundation of the earth. He came down. He shook the foundation where our enemies were gathered. He had my ear. He had. And the Bible says he was angry. He came down in anger and scattered them. How did David knew that God came down in his prayer? Because after he had prayed, he saw the situation changed. You see, in these three days, your situation will change. Those areas of life that I've seen, that are shown as if they were never going to shift. And there's a shifting on Marwa Road. They'll be shifting in your life. I told somebody today, I said, after the construction of the road, And the citizens here will be. That's what God dropped in my heart. Because it was not in the plan of God. The enemy will work for the wellness of your future. So it's not a time for relocation. It's a time for shifting. For a better destination in the divine plan. We will pray today. Some things will be happening in your family. Some things will be happening everywhere. Now, let me show you why things have to happen. Come to the book of Second, Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five. Are you there? Look at verse eighteen. And all things 
are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and are giving to us the ministry of reconciliation. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to Jesus Christ. We are returning back to power. Somebody say, I'm returning back to power. Verse 19, everybody, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and are committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Are you still there? Now come to verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's sake. Be ye reconciled to God. The time of atonement is a time of reconciliation with God. It's a time of returning to God. It's a time of returning to the covenant. It's a time of returning to power. It's a time of recovery in God's plan. It's a time of restoration of what has been stolen. It's a time of God's hand coming back on us to begot us. Are we here? We say, this is my son, this is my daughter. That's why you are taking the communion today and that communion is going to be a seal of an atonement. Powering your soul to live for God. And verse 21, everybody. For he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. On the season of atonement, we're just kind of celebrating memorial. And this time, in New Testament order, we are celebrating the memorial of the death of Jesus on the cross. Where he became a sin in our place. So that we can become righteous. The, righteous, the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God in him. We are remembering how he took our sin. And died for our sin he did not commit. So that we can live. For the purity and righteousness of God we do not deserve. Are we here? So that we can enjoy the blessedness of God that we never deserve. This was done by his blood. His blood was the seal of the atonement. And it's the blood that is the communion. Are we here? So he said, it became a sin that we might become the righteousness of God in the kingdom. And so, the first scripture tonight as we close is that Apostle Paul gave the testimony in Colossians chapter 1. Apostle Paul gave this testimony of what trans transpired here in Colossians chapter 1. Are we still here? Okay, I read from verse 12, Colossians chapter 1. And they said, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in the life. Giving thanks. Lift up your right hand and give thanks to God for the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. In the original divine Jewish order. I will proceed to verse 13. Who are delivered us from the powers of darkness. The blood of Jesus was what rescued us, was what delivered us from the powers of darkness. Are we still here? And had translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The redemption here in whom we will repurchase from our slavery unto his sonship as liberty in liberty. Now we'll be sold by whatever practice, and we will be made slave to the devil. But through the blood of Jesus, we will repurchased, we will redeemed, we will we were taken back, and our sonship was restored. Somebody is regaining his liberty tonight. Even the forgiveness of our sin. The Bible said in verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of every creature. He is the image of the invisible God. And he came to die as God in order to redeem God's people from the control and dominion of darkness. So when we talk about the time of atonement, we remember what Jesus went to the cross to do. We remember, but we remember the price he went to the cross to pay. And we remember the mystery of his death on the cross of Calvary. Is to terminate our slavery to the enemy, to restore our liberty of sonship, and to become that which the Lord has appointed us to be. Can we rise from our feet? He paid that debt. He did not owe. I owe that debt. I could not pay. I need that soul. And now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Lord Jesus paid the debt. That I could never pay. I paid, I owed a debt. I, I could not pay. I paid a debt. It did not owe. I need a song to wash away. much time left with us. But I want you to do something for yourself today. God said, this is a memorial he will be remembered. That time, many lamps would have been killed like today to celebrate the mystery and the feast of atonement. But no lamp will die now. The lamp of God has done it. We are only activating it. We are only appropriating it. We are only recognizing it. What God has done for us in Christ. That he has taken away what the enemy cast on us to make us his own property. And that God has taken us back by adoption. We have become God's children. He said in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, Therefore now there is no condemnation. Whatsoever has condemned you before today, the blood of Jesus has condemned. That is what we have come here to do. It's not only the horn of our salvation, He has become our Redeemer. So somebody will pray and cry to the Lord and recognize the mystery of your blood that your blood was shed for my soul, that your blood was shed for my freedom. Therefore, dear Lord, I have come here for the activation of my redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. Redeem me from whatsoever is against me. Can you open your mouth and pray?
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I am not going to spend more time with you, but I want you to catch the understanding. Colossians 1 says, He has redeemed me from the powers of darkness. What does that mean? He has redeemed me from the controlling powers of witchcraft, wickedness, and evil invention. And what did he do next? And translated me to the kingdom of his dear son. So, this simply means he has taken me from where the enemy kept me and have brought me to where he appointed for me. That shall be your testimony this year. Whatsoever power I desired your life to be and die, today receive your redemption. I receive my, I receive my redemption from the powers of the wicked. I receive my redemption from the powers of the wicked. And I declare the enforcement and translation of my destiny to my place of appointment. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Alado kapa to taya, ayagada gada. Alada pato tala, ragada gada. Ikoto do dea, ilano shalara. Alia kapa tata, iko kaliana nana. To waste time walk around and just see people who are praying. It's a night to pray. One more prayer I want you to pray. When the psalmist saw shadows of death, flood of ungodly men plotting evil against his life, what did he do? He was distressed. But the Bible said, In my distress, I cried to God, and God heard my voice. From my distress. God can hear your prayer in your pain. He can hear your prayer in your disappointment. If you can see him ahead of the disappointment. And I want you to know that what he saw was Jesus. I say, and God got angry and came down and scattered him. The blood of Jesus is what is going to speak for you today. Somebody will pray. In this day of our two men to God. Let the blood of Jesus intervene on my behalf. Every wickedness before me, every shadow of death before me, every ever before my heart, scatter by fire. Ayagata gata gata, irono no shakata, lenia kapatu telia, ino kapata lananeha. Lift up your hands. We can't take more than this. But I know that God is faithful. Close your eyes. Every foundation that has gone to war against your covenant appointment in Christ Jesus. Today, I decree the blood of Jesus shall contend with them. Every demonic sacrifices placed in strange altars to attack your destiny and your legacy. Today, the blood of Jesus shall enforce your redemption. Every invention of wickedness seeking to place you permanently in bondage so that your head will not be lifted up. Today, the blood of Jesus 
shall defy their intentions. Your head shall be lifted up. In the name of Jesus. Will so ever represent us or darkness in your body? Out of darkness in your womb. Out of darkness in your eyes. Out of darkness in your blood, in your stomach. Out of darkness in your blood fountain. Let the blood of Jesus flush them out. Let the blood of Jesus flush them out. And every voice of disunity and powers causing disunity. Causing frustrations and oppression. Open the gates your family. Today, the blood of Jesus shall enforce your unity. In the name of Jesus. I pray across the world, including this house, all our partners, all our sons and daughters, all our leaders, anywhere in the world, and in this house, and the satellite town, whosoever is sitting on our appointment, whosoever is delaying the, our appointment, whosoever avow that that we go as will to us shall not be delivered. Today, by the blood of Jesus, you are all seated. We recover what belongs to us. We recover our breakthrough. We recover our children. We recover our job. We recover our breakthrough. We recover our favor. We recover our peace. We recover our healing. By the atonement of blood of Jesus, our judgment has set aside. Our freedom is recovered in the name of Jesus. Father, we present this communion before you tonight. It's in obedience to your command. It's a communion of atonement. We have come to celebrate our freedom from sin. Our purification from sin. And the memorial of our redemption in Christ. And the memorial of the victory secured for us by his blood. And the substitutionary death on our behalf. Everyone that will come before this communion in faith. And that shall take it in faith. We trust that you are God. We is on your throne. Father, reveal yourself as a redeemer. Redeem their spirit from corruption. Redeem their ability from witchcraft. Redeem their life from wickedness. Heal their body. Heal their system. Heal their life. Heal their finances. And heal our church. We consecrate this communion. By this spoken word. And we command it to become light transmitter. In Jesus mighty name. Amen.